surviving in ye old Melbourne town? Quite well, uh, all things considered. Yeah, yeah. It's been, I mean, a bit of a tumultuous time and obviously more so for you guys down that way compared to the rest of the country, but you've also been gifting a bit of joy for the rest of us with intervention out in the world. Oh, yeah, totally. How does it feel to have that beautiful gem out in the world and causing a bit of joy for everyone? Uh, awesome. It just, it just, it, you know, just feels a bit chaotic though. So it's like, otherwise it's great. Yeah, that's good. That's very succinct and very 2020, I feel. It, it captures right. everything perfectly. Yeah, I mean, we, we are, um, we always say client liaison is escapism. So yeah, it's a good time for that right now. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I know you guys have obviously released a lot of new songs last year, but this is technically your first new material for this year. With this one coming to life a little bit under different circumstances, did this one fully come to fruition under this whole lockdown thing? Like, did you have any like foundations of this track in place prior to this year? Yeah, yeah. The, the um, Well, the music part was written and some melodies and stuff prior to lockdown. And then the lyrics took a more a twist that uh, reflected sort of a positive outcome and outlook past COVID. Mm. And that's, then it sort of came into focus because of that. Um, yeah. So I guess it's just sort of like, it's just so much like, you know, the, the U S Trump election now is sort of deafening. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to just people maybe getting when the weather in Melbourne gets, you know, into a nice steady pattern and we're allowed to go past the 25 K radius that people get to go out and go to the beach and listen to this song, you know, just go for a run, listen, just enjoy this song in a context that isn't COVID related. Yeah. And I mean, me talking about COVID probably isn't helping. Like I kept on telling myself, you know, when you go out and hang out with your friends, try not to talk about COVID. So I don't know. It's hard not to do, but yeah. We're looking forward to the song being sort of having a life outside of lockdown. Yeah, absolutely. It's been nice to kind of see that bit by bit the live music stuff is happening. You guys are so renowned for your live shows. You have so much potency on stage and you just have this energy that's always coming out of it. Has it kind of given you a bit more of a fire to like get back on stage? Like, have you got anything new in plan that you've had the time to kind of think about different ideas and different things that you may not have had the time to do previously? Yeah, it's been, I mean, it's nice to spend so much time in the studio. So, and to like, um, you know, we've been working separately as well and um, set up our synths and that kind of thing. So, um, and being able to work over Zoom right now, we're working with someone in London. Um, yeah. So like it's opened up a lot of doors, even though so many are closed. Yeah. It's like different doors that probably you wouldn't necessarily have gone looking for previously. So sometimes. You guys don't seem to be ones to sit in your comfort zones, but I guess it's nice to sometimes have something force you somewhere different from time definitely. to time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And I guess, like, as you said, like, you, you are kind of known for having this positivity in your songs. Like, how has it come, like, as you sort of slowly approach this second album, do you find yourselves branching out a bit more? Like, what actually inspires you creatively or is there something outside of music that does impact a bit more on your creativity as well? Like, do you have a pretty sturdy baseline of what brings client layers into life um oh it's always new things right now we're into cults um and cons uh yeah the kind of like 70s cults and yeah. all, all the aesthetic that they brought and like uh ufos and that kind of world but like i mean not all our songs are positive um mm -hmm. it's generally like the singles or the you know the one the dancey numbers like people come to our shows to escape and dance and have fun um, and we've got songs about all kinds of things on the album, but generally, yeah, I mean, to escape, you've got to like, you've got to entice people in and show them a good time first and foremost. So that's, yeah, always top of the agenda. That's hilarious too. I was actually, I went on a Wikipedia cult bender the other night. I don't know how I got there. It was like, all, I was up all night and I'm like, it's oddly fascinating. And I think I'm actually really excited to hear that because I feel like I've been on the same vein a little bit. So. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a lot out of this next stage by the sound of it. So, are the plans here? Like, are you guys planning to 
try for this album in the near future? Are you just kind of throwing these singles out and just seeing what happens at this point? Are there any set in stone? Yeah. Yes, it's on, it's on the horizon, definitely. Like mm. we, we are working toward that, but we're just sort of not announcing, making any announcements or anything. Like it's, it, we want to get it out sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, the fact that there isn't, you know, festivals pumping and we're in this weird time, Mm. It means that we have a bit of extra time up our sleeve to ease back into it. But yeah, we, we, we want to get it out soon and, and, and hopefully the release will coincide perfectly with the release of our ability to go out and go back to festivals. So we just, we want to sort of shap, uh, flank that movement and yeah. ease back into it. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess because we don't have many shows in the near future, can we take a tiny brief moment back in time? Can you guys take me back to the first ever client liaison gig? Who was there? Where was it? How many disco balls out of 10 would we give it? Sure. Um, um, I mean, if it wasn't for these early gigs, we client liaison might not exist um, because it always gave us impetus to finish music and actually present it to people because we have a tendency to just continually work away and not show people all our work. So um, it was a, a good friend of ours called Oscar McLennan, a um, very inspiring character who was having a house party in on Beaconsfield Parade um, on um, St Kilda, on the Albert Park foreshore um, at, at his house there. And it was a one piece party. So everyone was wearing one piece um, persuasions. And he said, you've got to play, you've got to play because we played him a few songs. And so Harvey got himself a keyboard and a little vocoder and I got a mic and we had a really shoddy sound system and we're in the upstairs um, room and the lights were pitch, nearly pitch black and the floor nearly caved in. It was a um, single story terrace house and it was incredible. Yeah, it was a really great feeling. And um, from that, we started becoming the house party band. Mm. And look at you now, bloody hell, you're like... Mm literally is taking the world by storm and what yeah it's nice it went well actually it's not always I don't always get the same reaction usually for a lot of people it's like they were kicked off early or something so it's nice to know that it went according to plan compare that to like your most recent show like do you feel like there is a typical client liaison fan when you look out across that crowd do you find you have a bit of a mix of people that are really connecting with these kind of songs uh I think it, cha it it's interesting to see it change because we came from like the Melbourne hip underground scene, but we were doing very poppy things. Um, and so it's nice to see it reach a broader audience. And that's especially true because now we have like 60 year olds that follow us around the country or we've got people with their kids that try to come to every show and the kids are really obsessed. So like we want to uh, reach a wide demographic because Hopefully there's something for everyone. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely on the money there, whether you intended it or not, with how you write. So it's a nice coincidence when everything aligns like that. So that's always a nice thing. I know you guys, it's no secret that you are very affiliated with, you know, the late 80s, early 90s kind of aesthetic. And in that topic, to not be entirely overly serious, but if you guys had to cast yourselves as anyone in any movie from the late 80s or early 90s, would you have an inkling of who you would cast yourselves as? Oh, wait, okay, bear with me. I really like um, the movie Clue. Mm. Um, oh, that's been on my list to watch as well. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually like a period piece. You know, do you know Cluedo, the board game? Yeah. Based on that. With like Colonel Mustard and Professor Plum. That was my favourite movie growing up. And I believe it's from the 80s. Um, yeah, right. I think is Tim Curry in that? I want to yeah, he's the, yeah, he's the camp butler. Like, yeah, he's incredible. So um, I kind of align myself with all those characters. Miss Peacock. Yes. Very um, extravagant or um, Colonel Mustard, quite mm -hmm. well to do. The camp butler. Um, that's what came to my mind. Yeah. Well, just on that topic, I do miss 90s, early 90s cinema films like mm. Problem Child or, you know, Junior, particularly the um, the scores, the symphonic scores. Yeah. Oh, God, where to begin? <laughs> I'll probably, you know, any, something that's a thriller. I liked thrillers mm. a lot, mm. especially in uh, early 90s thriller. Yeah, totally. 
feel like you're right. They just don't have that same kind of vibe to it. So well, maybe we'll remake some. That can be a little project for 2021 that I can impose on you. Please do. <laughs> and to close us out today, I won't keep you here all day, but in honour of the new single Intervention, offering such an anthem for resilience and positivity, what is one thing in each of your lives that kind of helps you maintain that level of strength, you know, for yourself that kind of sticks out when you're having a bit of a rough time? And Oh, God. Um... Well, like, you know, uh, it could be swimming or, you know, my dog, which brings me joy, mm -hmm. friends, the, just the ability to be creative, you know, it'd be a, an amalgamation of all that. Yeah, I think we're so, we're so lucky to be doing what we love, really. To be able to make music is, yeah. is a real privilege yeah. uh, right now. So, yeah, making music yeah. and listening. I mean, music is just always a panacea for everything. Yeah, absolutely. Very poetic and, and you guys give so much of that joy with everything you do. So congratulations on such a beautiful release as per usual. And I mean, whether or not you make these 80s and 90s movies next year, regardless, it's so exciting to see what will come next to you guys. And thank you for such a wonderful track today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's an intervention.